that's exactly right. That's exactly right. As, soon as, as long as the Republicans continue to insist upon zero operating deficits, uh, there's only two ways to get there, folks. Uh, one way is you generate new, rev new sources of revenue, or another thing, you do it on the backs of the disabled, you do it on the backs of seniors, and you do it on the backs of the blind. Uh, uh, in education, of course. Uh, and it's just not, you know, I, I, you know I've been here uh, too long uh, to uh, not understand how uh, budget agreements get forged. And um, there's clearly here a connection between how much we borrow, certainly into the future, uh, and the need to uh, be fiscally prudent. And the way I look at it, you've got people on the Republican Party on the Senate side, Norman, and notice I haven't bashed, I'm not bashing any members of the Senate either, I'm not going to bash anybody, but um, to, for them to insist upon, you know, on the one hand, to say, we want zero, a zero operating deficit, certainly they can't close, because if the governor, got, you know, if he committed that to them, they can't go there on that, I don't know what it is that they want to close on the budget, it's beyond me what it is that they want. But I saw that in the course of the negotiations. It was pretty clear, um, you know, the goal line uh, kept moving uh, any time Senator Ackerman talked about it. And, and I get that, you know, obviously he was having some political issues, but for, for, for him and members of his caucus to, on the one hand, say, we want money for water storage, to spend taxpayer money, California taxpayer money, for water storage, and then to say that, you know, you want to eliminate the structural deficit at the same time is just inconsistent. Uh, how are you going to do that? You know, you've got to cut your way to it. And the only way to cut your way to it, and you know, I'll tell you one thing about voters, I'm learning more and more, uh, is that you know, they, they pick up on what's going on. And more often than not, the voters will look at what happens here and, and, and they'll make a blanket sort of uh, you know, reaction. They have a blanket reaction to what happens here. If some, something's going wrong, they blame the entire legislature. This time around, uh, particularly if this thing uh, keeps moving in the direction that it's moving, which is budget impasse, no budget. Uh, these guys are still holding us hostage and holding this budget hostage. I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to work very hard to uh, see to it this time around that uh, the voters in California can distinguish between the people who voted for the budget and the people who didn't vote for the budget. Uh, the people who believe that we need to compromise, that we need to work with Democrats and Republicans to come together uh, to build bipartisanship and those who are the extremists uh, to the right that simply don't share the views nor the values of Californians. Uh, because you know, this, this is clearly uh, something unconscionable, that they're holding up the budget as long as they have been uh, with no end in sight, with no exit strategy, with no end game whatsoever. So, uh, there is a way that you can also work to change the system that we have not the two-thirds vote. I was talking to Danny Eaton, my chief of staff, last night about this, and you know, one thing I said to him, I said, you know, um, if and when we don't, no one's asked about, about term limits, interestingly enough, whenever we do something good, we think, we always say, you're doing this because of term limits. It's always the point of, it's always the, the, the purpose behind everything that we do right, but when we do stuff wrong, nobody connects it with it. So for anybody who thought that we, everything that we were doing was connected to term limits, here's an example why it's not the case. But assuming that a term limits initiative doesn't pass, I'll tell you what I'd like to spend my last year in the legislature, meaning 2008 doing, is working to change the way budgets are approved and agreed upon in the state of California. I think it's necessary to do that. I think what's happening right now is but an example of that. And the other thing I think that is, that is just amazingly uh, uh, disturbing and the real sour point in this, um, uh, in this discourse is the lack of pressure from the press that folks would just allow this to go on without doing the types of things like what the Chronicle does when somebody doesn't fix a pothole, you know, the countdown to, you know, when does the pothole on K and J or whatever streets get fixed. You know, uh, when is this general manager going to respond to this problem or this constituent? Uh, instead, the blogs are sort of driving some of what's going on. And, um, and you know, a lot of political hearsay. Um, but the facts are the facts, folks. The Republican senators are holding up California budget. Those are the facts. And, um, you know, 
There might be people out there who say, yeah, I agree with the notion that we ought to reduce spending. Okay, well good. Guess what? The budget's been approved. We're down to one Republican vote in the Senate to get it out, and, and it's not happening. 